Chapter 1. Arrival October 1st, 1911 All glory comes from being daring enough to begin. My mom always tells us this, all four of us, almost every day. Mom, can you stop with the life quotes now? Eliza remarked. It's a new chapter of our lives. Eliza, you're going to have to hear that every day for the rest of your life, so you should accept it. Eliza laughed as she hugged Mom. I always granted her wit. As for Eliza, she chuckles at the repeated saying. Charlie, the eldest, doesn't pay attention to the silly quotes. As for Stephen, the youngest, he listens to the quotes, and his big eyes show his love for everything and everyone. The boat stopped all of a sudden. It shifted slightly. We are here. Finally. The ship's maiden voyage was a success. I looked out over the boat's bow to see the dark blue, crystal-looking waves splashing against the starboard side of the ship. Loud noises and screams filled my ears, all happy sounds. The fish crowded around, looking for food the youngest passengers might throw in. I looked out at the new land I'd call my home. There were many trees. It was different and new, and it frightened me a little, but I am a brave girl. The trees were filled with leaves colored bright orange, yellow, and crimson red. The sky was a light shade of blue and was cloudless. It was the perfect temperature, not too hot, not too cold. Some might say a perfect day. To me, it was quite scary, a new home in an entirely new place. My family and I were saying goodbye England and hello America. The ship was packed with many other families looking for a better life, too. America had many things to offer. Many people got sick during the journey. Thankfully, none of my family did. Mom, we're nervous, Charlie whispered. I don't know if I'm ready for America, Mom, Eliza mumbled. I agree, Stephen trembled. Children, you'll be fine. This is exciting, explained my father. My mom stays home with us most of the time, but has been considering a job. Very risky for a woman. Women are expected to stay home, clean, cook, and take care of the children. I am not looking forward to that when I grow up. I'm very similar to my mom. We both want to be more than a housewife. We want to have the man's role in the family. Mom figured Charlie would be old enough to take care of us now that he's 15. My father is a scientist who came to the States for his new job. A well-known museum asked him to help them look deeper into the species of rare butterfly he discovered with his team. Apparently, all his co-workers are jealous. My father is wonderful. He would be a family man, but rarely sees us because of his job. I miss him dearly most of the time and often feel strange when he is absent. Sometimes, I think his job occupies him so much he won't come home and will just live at the museum and continue to allow the butterflies to consume his life. Not surprisingly, because we are twins, Eliza and I have the tightest bond in the family. But I like Charlie a lot. He has a good sense of humor. Stephen, well, of course I love the lad, but he can be quite a bother sometimes. He is so happy all the time. I never met anyone so cheerful. My family was on the wealthy side compared to the other families on the boat. We already have a house in America, a nice one, too. Mom and my father bought the house while we were still in Britain. It's just waiting for us to come home. Most of our things have been sent ahead, and Mom says we can move right in. I've pictured my new room a few different ways in my head, and am eager to see what it is really like. Millicent Peters, another 11-year-old I met on the boat, was holding my hand looking out at the waves with wrinkles in between her eyebrows. Her younger brother and sister, Caroline and Nathaniel, came running up, tugging at Millicent's wrinkled tan skirt. Yes? Millicent asked. We're scared, Millie. Can we go back home and live in England? They asked. You know I'll miss England, too, but there are more opportunities here, she replied. Clara, Millicent's 15-year-old sister, walked up and whispered into Caroline and Nathaniel's ears that it would be fine and hugged both tightly.